Hey everybody, my name is Dan Clark and I just want to thank you for coming to my channel, Life After Religion. And today I have a very, very, very important video that I want to share with you. And I thought I'd put it out in a diagram like this so that you could understand it a little bit better. The reason I want you to understand it is because what's contained in here is truth and truth that will set you free. But sometimes we got to see it. We can't only hear it, but we got to see it. And so the title of this video is called How Watchtower Hijacked Your Soul and How You Can Take It Back. And they didn't only uh, hijack your soul, they hijacked my soul. And they did this by bribery and a lot of psychology, a lot of cultic psychology. So today I'm gonna to try to break it down and make it really, really simple so that you can understand how we were hijacked. And I wanna talk about what we were before we were a witness and then what we were after we became a witness. And if you understand that, you'll be able to understand how you can back out out from under this slavery and mind control that Watchtower systematically put us into. And I'm gonna show you the system. I'm gonna show you how you got in, and then I'm gonna show you how to get out. Okay, so let's take a look at my diagram here. And what we have here is we have a diagram, it's a triangle, and inside it says you. You know, you are the temple of God, right? That's what the Bible says, you are the temple, right? So what's the temple made of? Here's what the temple's made of. You've got a left brain, you've got a right brain, and you've got a heart, right? The kingdom of God is within you, right? This is what you were, right? You were whole, you were complete, you were enough. Now, what Watchtower's intention to do was they wanted to be your temple. They're the false temple, right? So how did they do this? Well, they did it systematically, and I'm gonna walk you through it very carefully, because I'm gonna walk you through it just like what the Watchtower would do. What they do is they've gotta get you to disconnect with your left brain, your right brain, and your heart. They've gotta get you to disconnect. We talked about that last night on a radio show. We got our radio show called Heart to Heart. It's on six screens of the Watchtower, and uh, they sponsor our show. And uh, we had a lady on there last night, and she started talking about this disconnect. And so I, this all of a sudden came to mind, this picture. So here we are, right? The temple of God, right? The left brain, the right brain, and the heart. Well, what are we told by Watchtower? When we start studying the Watchtower, here's, here's the first thing they want to attack. They want to get us out of our heart. Why do they want to get us out of our heart? Why do they attack the heart? Why do they say the heart is treacherous and desperate and who can know it? You can't trust your heart. Don't follow your heart. The heart will lead you down all these bad roads. Don't trust it. Why do they want to get you out of here? I'm going to tell you why. Because they cannot control the heart. The, the heart will run to the rescue of, of a child. If, if a woman has a child, she'll run to the rescue of it, whether her life depends on it or not. She'll throw herself in front of the car. She'll do whatever to save that child. But if, if you're not in your heart, you won't do that. So Watchtower cleverly moves you from heart to head. So, so they bastardize the heart, right? The, the heart's treacherous and desperate. I already said that. They, they, they take you out. So, so you say, I, I can't trust that feeling, that inner guidance, that inner GPS. I can't trust that. So you say, okay, that's good. I better not trust that because it might lead me down some bad road. So gone. The heart now is gone, right? <clears throat> and then, now here's the other thing. In order to become a Jehovah's Witness, what do we have to say about this org, this JW.org, the Watchtower? What do we have to say? We have to say, we have to speak with our own words. We have to say to the elders, we have to go to several elders, and we have to say, this is God's only visible organization on work. Now think about that. This is God's only channel on earth today. Watchtower, Bible and Tract Society, the faithful and discreet slave. And here's why, and here's the, the, the story they tell us, right? They tell us that Jesus appointed them, Watchtower, over all the belongings. So they said that Jesus gives us information or gives it to them, right? They said they're, they're the mediator, right? Jesus gives them the spiritual food to give to us at the proper time. So governing body tells us that we need to confess with our mouth that we have to affirm that they are God's visible organization on earth and that they are the only ones 
who hear God's voice and can put it into Watchtower. They don't even want you reading your Bible, okay? So when we become a witness, we have to go in and say, this is God's only organization on earth. It's the only one. It's the faithful and discreet slave. And they give us our spiritual food. So they hear from Jesus, they give us our food, and we eat it, right? In the, in, in the way of Watchtower and Awake and, and all their publications. So when we say that, when we say that, when we affirm that, we attack our right brain, right? Our right brain is our etheric connection. Our left brain, and I'll just explain this to you, our left brain is where we think. It's a survival of the fittest. It's, it's, it's we need to go get a job. We need to feed our family. We need to do this. Something happens. It's our thinker. It's a thinking machine and it's doing exactly what it's supposed to do, right? It's thinking, it's, it's keeping us safe, it's protecting us, it's looking ahead, it's doing all this. But <clears throat> So we have a left brain and we have a right brain, which is our etheric or our spiritual connection to God. Well, Watchtower now says they're the spiritual connection, not this. Not your own brain. We're the spiritual connection. We'll tell you what the Bible says. We'll tell you how to live. Okay? So so now we've not only got the heart shut down. Now, this is systematic, right? Th this is actually probably first, the right brain, right? You've got to do this before you become a witness. Then they start attacking the heart. They start saying that, like I said, the heart is treacherous and desperate. Now, the left brain is where you do most of your thinking. Well, guess who does most of your thinking once you come into the watchtower? The channeled material that they get, they, they, they say they channel it from Jesus. They're the channel, right? They're the medium, the mediator. They get the information from Jesus. It's channeled into governing body, and then it comes out to us, right? And so they said, you don't really have to think too much at all because we're going to tell you how to have sex, what jobs you can have, um, how to think, what to do in the bedroom, and just about everything else that your left brain does in fact, they tell you, I remember over and over, they read the scripture in Romans that says, that was talking about the, uh, when I wish to do right. You remember that? Don't trust yourself again. See, don't trust yourself. Don't trust the inner GPS. Don't trust the heart. Don't trust your thinking. You know, when I wish to do right, bad is present with me, they said in Romans. Miserable man, who's going to rescue you? JW.org, they say, is going to rescue me. Just keep going to the meeting. Just keep passing out magazines. Just keep getting hours. Get, come to your Zoom meeting. Come in your suit and tie. JW.org replaced your temple. Your temple was systematically hijacked by Watchtower. Think about that. Don't trust your heart. We're your right brain. We're your connection to God. And we're going to tell you what to think, do, how to act. They hijacked us. Now, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Now that we realize, you know, who we were before we come in, right? We were enough, right? Weren't we enough? Yeah, we had some things to learn. We were going to learn by what we suffered. That's what Jesus said, right? We're going to learn by what we suffer. So, so we were enough. That's what Jesus' message was, wasn't it? When he was going out and the priests were trying to tell him, you need to do this, you need to do this, you need to do this. You know, Jesus said, no, it's inside of you. This system. Now, just think about this. God gave me a heart. God gave me that inner guidance right here. God gave it to me. Who is Watchtower to say it's no good? Who's Watchtower to say it's treacherous and desperate? Who's Watchtower to say they're God in my mind and temple? that they're my mediator, that I can't go directly to God, that I can't read my Bible for himself. They hijacked us right here. <clears throat> and then they told us everything else we need to know. So, so, so how do we get out of this? This is a matrix. This is slavery. That's why they call us good for nothing slaves. Now I want to say this too. Once they hijacked this, once they hijacked this kingdom within us, once they took it, once they owned it, what did they do? They fed us with programs. What kind of programs? Watchtower, awake, don't trust yourself. The heart treacherous and desperate. Stay inside the kingdom hall. Don't think for yourself. Don't go down that road. No, don't go down that road. Don't go. I mean, it's insane. These guys are insane what they've done to us. So, so they really, they've replaced JW.org. Actually, they've taken JW.org and they've installed it right here, right in the middle of our brain was jw.org. <clears throat> now the question is, 
How in the hell do we get out of this matrix, out of this programming? Because most of us have been programmed for many, many years. For me, it was 40. So how did I get out of here? How do you get JW.org, the false temple, out so that your temple, your inner temple, can start operating again as it should? So I can listen to my brain, so I can reason, so I can pray to my God, and so I can listen to my heart. That's a, that's a, that's a field of, of, of energy that, that's inside of us that, that Jesus said we could tap into, right? And so how do we get back here? Here's how we do it. We've got to start questioning. Like, I can't follow my heart. Well, that means I can't fall in love, right? That means I can't, uh, yeah, you know, see, see some girl out there. I can't follow my heart, my intuition. I, I can't use this. Is that really true? You know, you know, sometimes that saves our life, our intuition, our spiritual intuition that comes from our heart that says, don't go that way. Or, or maybe you should go that way and meet that person. That's an that's a inter-guide. Like I said, we don't always get it right, but we don't always get it right when we're in Kingdom Hall, right? So we've got to take this back. But I think I'm going to use this illustration a little bit better. This, this brain, this, this, this organization that claims they're God on earth, if you will, you know, the, the medium be between us and God, the channel, right? How do, how do we get rid of this? How do we start breaking down its infrastructure? Because it is an infrastructure right in between our temple. So how do we break it down? We question it. We say, is this really God's temple? Why have they given false prophecies? You've got to have courage to say that. They have false prophesied for over a hundred years. We got to come out of denial. Really, we got to say they have false prophesied and they don't apologize. They don't say, I'm sorry. When 75 hit, as we all know, they came up with a generation prophecy. They went right into a meeting, had a cup of coffee, and said, We got to keep the sheep strung along. This is what they've done. This is what they've done. So we've got to say, no, wait a minute. Wait a minute. They lied. They lied. Wait a minute. The information that they said that came from Jesus that was channeled, they're taking it back now. Give us the literature back. We want that record gone. Now they're starting up a media center. You know, they're not even a religion. I mean, they're an internet company now, JW.org. But think about it. We've got to start questioning the infrastructure. We've got to question the beliefs that they've told us, all these things. We've got to start thinking for ourselves. We've got to back out. And you know, that takes a little courage once they've once they've said that, you know, they're they're the anointed, they're the way showers, they're the only way. Really, I mean that's pretty narcissistic to get rid of this screen. That's pretty narcissistic, isn't it? Actually, that's insane. That is absolutely insane to say that Jehovah put eight men over the whole world to say, come to them. That is as narcissistic and nutty as it gets. That's a psychopath. I'm just going to tell you, that's a psychopath. And what do they tell you when you start wanting to break away from here? When you say, you know, I think I've had enough of this org. You know, they told me to leave my kid and my kid killed herself. They told me to, to abandon my, my mother, my family. You know what I mean? And we say we want to start coming away from here. What does Watchtower do? What does a slave owner do? He threatens you. He threatens you. He says, if your son turns away from us or your daughter or your uncle or whatever, it's an enemy. Think about that. It's an enemy of Jehovah, which means it should be an enemy of you. So, so just think about that for a minute. I, I mean, that's 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 psychopathic to 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 destroy a family because of disbelief or that somebody got disgruntled with an elder somebody leaves you know they've got a 2 to 10 year sentence or some people say a year whatever it doesn't matter whatever it is it's too long but just think about that so when we start to take back our authority we start thinking what happens jw.org attacks you when I asked the organization about the generation prophecy and, and said, did we just pass a generation prophecy of 70 or 80 years? Yeah, you, know, you know, that was considered a generation, 70 or 80 years, and, and the end was going to come. So late 80s, early 90s, that time period was up. So they changed. They were starting to change into the overlapping generation prophecy. So when I asked the elders, when I went to them honestly, sincerely, 
and said, you know, brothers, did we just pass up a prophecy? We've been preaching about this for several years about the generation that was going to see the end. And uh, they put me on apostate watch. They wrote to society and the society said, keep an eye on him. See, they attack me. They attack me because I started to think something inside me. What was it inside me that said, maybe you need to question this date, this belief system? Well, the truth. The truth was residing in my heart, right? So my heart comes up and says to the brain, it says, hey, um, you might want to consider the fact that they may have lied or they may have gotten it wrong. Well, they weren't going to admit they got it wrong or they lied, but they were going to attack me and they did. And that's why I'm not a witness today because I asked that simple question um, about the generation. They, they looked at me like a deer in the headlights and they asked, why are you questioning? And little did I know how much of a slave I was. Little did I know how they punish those who start to think for themselves. And so that started to register. I started to think about the name Jehovah, right? We're told, you know, that that's God's only name, the name Jehovah, right? And, 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 and so starting to think again, I said, well, how has knowing the name of Jehovah helped them? I mean, over a hundred years of false prophecy and you're Jehovah's best friend? You're Jehovah's best friend. You're the one, you're the mediator that he gives the spiritual food to. And now you're throwing away the literature. See, so, so we start thinking. We start saying, why are they throwing away the literature? Why are they punishing the people so hard? Why won't they let a man come back to the kingdom hall when he comes back without a year? I mean, just think about a year. Would you put your kid in the corner for a year? Your baby, your whatever? I mean, you know, I have talked to people that have told me recently that they have had to be in the same room with their father, literally working with their father and not talking to him, not mumbling a word. And they felt 100% uh, okay with it <clears throat> because they lost their heart. They were no longer connected to their heart because nobody connected to their heart would let somebody go through that type of abuse, right? So this is how we take it back <clears throat> and we've got to take it back. These guys are slave owners. Their agenda is watchtower. Their agenda is for you to pass out watchtower and build kingdom halls and convention centers and to keep you in bondage. It isn't to protect you. All their prophecies have been wrong. So, so the intention is, why? like say right now, why wouldn't they admit they've gotten it wrong? Why wouldn't they admit that they've got these, these prophecies wrong um, and stop it? Why wouldn't they turn around? For whatever reason, they want this. They want people's temple. This is this is something evil, guys. I gotta tell you, any man who wants to control another man or woman like this is evil. Anyone who would want to reign in your temple and have them be your authoritarian dictators is evil. And that's what Watchtower is. Those men are evil. They want to control your temple. They want to scare the hell out of you if you try to leave. If you try to leave, they will punish you. They have told you that you are gonna get the second death where there's no resurrection. They've said you're a pig going to the mire. They have talks about people who've left, apostates that have left, good-hearted people that have just questioned them, reasonable questions, and they've bastardized them because they're slave owners. A lot of people say they're real estate moguls. They're slave owners. They have an intention to run people's lives. They can't admit they're wrong. These are not good men. I am sorry, these are not good men. And as we've seen, like we saw Tony Morris, Anthony Morris, whatever his name is, buy all that liquor. That's what kind of people are running governing body. These guys are making real estate deals. They're selling off their kingdom halls. They're abandoning their people. I mean, think about this, this pandemic that's going on, pandemic, pandemic going on right now. Most congregations have got together. Wouldn't it be wonderful to get back together? Wouldn't it be wonderful to look your brother in the eye and say, my God, you're still here <coughs> and connect with him and hug him and embrace him. That's what most religions are doing. Most religions are so happy, so rejoiceful that they'd get to see their brother and say, hey, hang on, look at each other in the eye and say, hang on, you know, or in the end or whatever they say to each other. But these guys said no. These guys are more interested in selling kingdom halls. 
than those brothers meeting together, even though those brothers built these halls. They built these halls, worked night and day to build these halls. They're being abandoned by Watchtower, being sold off. And now Watchtower has the audacity, the audacity to say, give us millions of dollars, $150 million in free labor. They're asking for attorneys. They're asking for motorhomes. They're asking for anything they can get from these people. These are not good people. These people need to close up shop and we need to take back our temple. And here's the other thing. We need to never, ever give it away again to anyone. God can work directly right from here to here, right from our heart to it. And it says that in the Bible, right? Worship in spirit and truth. Never, ever, ever should we give this temple away to a mediator, to a man. There should not be a man between us and God. We should be able to bow our head, hear his voice, however that is, intuition, whatever it is, and be okay. We're enough. We don't need this. We do not need this. <clears throat> and that's why they're false prophets. So anyway, I just want to say, guys, you know, no more mind control. No more mind control. Let's, let's get out of this matrix. Let's get out of this watchtower matrix and get back. Remember, we are enough. We are enough. Jesus said, the kingdom of God is within you. The kingdom of God is at hand. You have everything you need. God, when he made us, gave us everything we need to think, reason, to listen, to, to have heartfelt love for one another. It's all within us and we can access it and we and we should access it and, and it's a little hard once we've got these what what i call training wheels off us you know watchtower has wanted to be our daddy and keep training wheels on us our whole life so when we take these training wheels off when we're actually this this child you know what i mean when we get this off it's a little bit hard we ha we haven't really used our our brains that much we really haven't prayed maybe that much it's kind of hard to pray to an angry pissed off god that wants to genocide anyone but but us right so anyway long story short so 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 we haven't learned to really follow in inner gps so just know that as we continue to break this infrastructure down this matrix this jw matrix and we start living within inside of us and start living in this realm it's a little bit clumsy at first and it's a little bit awkward but eventually all this comes into alignment isn't that beautiful the heart comes into alignment with the brain the brain with the left brain the the, the right brain and left brain the spirit communicates with the left brain what to do the heart all this is a big communication center and <clears throat> it's our temple. And so this is a beautiful thing. When we understand this and this is activated, we're free. This is the truth. This is the truth that sets us free. This, this, was, this was phony and it's okay because, you know, we didn't have anything to compare us with. You know, like I've heard many times, you know, time is the enemy of false prophets uh, because time will reveal that they are false prophets. And of course, of course, the Bible says, if anyone is prophesied and it doesn't come true, do not fear these ones. And what's the biggest thing they do? They try to put everybody into fear. So again, the brain says, that's not right. That's not right that we should live in fear. Why am I always not right? Why, when I wish to do right, is bad? Why is my heart trying? You know, all these gifts God gave to us, Watchtower has bastardized them and said, don't worry about it. We'll take it from here. Not anymore. Not anymore. That's it. That's it for Watchtower. That's it. Watchtower is gone. We're coming back home. That's what we got to do, guys. We're coming back home. Anyway, guys, that's all I wanted to say today. I hope this diagram helps you. I hope it helps you see what we are and what Watchtower did and how they did it and how to take it back. And if you feel this video is important, please pass it on. Pass it on to other people so they can understand what it was that happens. Because, you know, unless we get a visual, we really, we really don't know what happened. We just, you know, we just know that they dangled a carrot. They really bribed us, right? And they said, you know, you can live in paradise. You can uh, return to the bloom of your youth. You're going to build houses and this. So, so that was the bribe. And then, and then of course, we said, yes, yes, that's what we want. And so here's what you got to do to get it. You just got to give us your soul and, uh, and never leave. 
And so, anyway, if you guys feel this video is important, please pass it on. Please subscribe to my channel. Um, it helps. The more people that subscribe, it gives it more reach so it can reach more people. And uh, I just want to tell you to have a great day. And I want you to know I'm not really mad. I'm just passionate about this. I want to get this truth out there. I've had family members, as you know, that have died in there. My dad died of shame. A uh, real hardworking man died. My mother died in there. You know, she was saying, Jehovah's going to kill me. Jehovah's going to kill me. And it was a sad thing for me to watch that Watchtower had enslaved her and made her feel so dumbed down and so insufficient and so inadequate. It was pure poison. It was pure poison to this. They completely destroyed her inner temple to where she wasn't there anymore. And there's no reason for that. So that's why... The, we're here to, to have this life and have it more fully according to the Bible. And and but if as long as we live as long as we're not in these matrix, we can have that. We've got to come back home. So anyway, that's it guys. This is Dan Clark, Life After Religion, and you guys have a great day. And I hope this sets you free just a little bit more. Thank you so much.